Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am creating another card for my Christmas in July series and I am featuring my favorite Christmas palette. I'm using a few of the colors from this palette and I will be using this palette over and over again this holiday season. I am featuring the Candy Canes and Holly die set from Spellbinders as well as the Mistletoe Greetings Better Press plate set and coordinating dies. I love this because you can create a bunch of sentiments at once. Now this palette here is going to be my go-to holiday palette for 2024 and it includes some Concord and Ninth colors as well as an ivory cardstock. I have some Ballet Slipper and Watermelon, Poppy, Rainforest, Juniper, Sea Glass, and Stardust. And these colors look so wonderful together. I love that there's a lot of pink and kind of those blue greens for the holiday season. I am going to start by die cutting these dies from various colors of cardstock. For the candy cane base, I am using antique ivory cardstock from Hero Arts. For the holly leaves, I'm using rainforest. For my holly berries, I am using a splash of poppy cardstock and the poppy tends to come in in little splashes. I tend to concentrate on the pinks more when I'm doing my holiday cards. And for the stripes on the candy canes, I'm using watermelon cardstock from Concord and Ninth. So I'm arranging these on my die cutting plates and I'm gonna run them through my Anna Griffin Empress machine and die cut all of these pieces at once. Now I am going to go back and die cut these candy canes again from some plain white cardstock a few times and stack them up so that I can add some dimension to these candy canes. But for now, I'm just going to kind of sort through all my die cuts and get everything out of the way. Now I will mention I did get a little bit lucky because these stripes of the candy cane stayed inside the cardstock and that allowed me to kind of move them all and keep them in order. Now when I'm adhering these stripes to the candy canes, there are some indentions on the die cuts that the die creates. And so I am using those for my guide and I'm just adding a little bit of liquid glue inside of those indentions. And then the stripes from the candy cane that die cut with the die, they nestle right into those indented little grooves there. And you can kind of just wiggle them into place. Now when I'm adhering die cuts together like this, especially when there's some smaller pieces, I love to use my dual tipped embellishment tool from Pink Fresh Studio. You can see I have a little kind of wax tip there that allows me to pick up these smaller die cuts and then just kind of nestle them in where I need them. Now something that I really love about this candy cane and holly die set from Spellbinders is that there are candy canes that face both directions. And why is this cool? Well, because you can create a heart out of them and you can have them crisscross. And then also if you have a little stocking or a pocket that you're tucking them in on your card project, you can pick the one that works best for the direction that you want it to face. So it's kind of nice that you have both of those candy cane options. And then there is a stripe die for each of the candy canes directions. So you get two of the dies that create the stripes, one for each direction, and two candy cane dies as well. Now to hold my candy canes in place as I place the stripes, I am using a misty sticky mat here. I have one that I use that I don't care if I get adhesive on and stuff. This is that one that I just kind of keep to the side and if I'm doing something really messy, I'll use this one. And I kind of like to protect my photopolymer sticky mats so that I'm not getting liquid glue and stuff like that all over them. So you can see I finished off my first candy cane. I'm gonna lift it off of the sticky mat and I went ahead and assembled the second candy cane off screen. You can see it there in the upper left hand side there. And now I'm using some liquid glue to place the holly berries on top of the base. Now the base is kind of just that backer that holds all of these individual die cuts together. You could use the base by itself, but I love that layering up these additional pieces of cardstock adds a little more dimension to the card. And I've never met dimension on a card that I didn't like. <laughs> 
So I'm gonna adhere those together and then I will adhere my holly leaves together here in just a bit. But as I mentioned before, I went ahead and die cut the candy cane base three times from some plain white cardstock. I'm adding liquid glue on the top of those and I'm gonna stack those up behind my assembled candy canes. This is going to give these candy canes a little bit of weight, a little bit of heft, and a little bit of dimension on the card. And it really does just help die cuts like this feel more substantial. They, it just takes up a little more space it demands a little more attention when you do this. Now, I know that this is not for everyone. And so if this is not your jam, you do not have to do it. But I did go ahead and add three layers of white cardstock behind each candy cane. And I like to use liquid glue and then pick them up off of my surface and just kind of line up the edges using my fingers. Now on this card, I'm going to be using the sentiments from the Mistletoe Greetings Better Press plate set. Now this includes several greetings that you can press using your Better Press system all at once, but keep in mind that Better Press plates are also compatible with your hot foil machine. So you get a lot of different looks out of the same product, and this includes the coordinating dies to create these sentiment banners. So I'm lining up both of the little greeting sets from the Mistletoe Greetings Better Press plate set on my Better Press platform, and I'm inking them up using the Concord and Ninth Rainforest ink, and I'm going to press them on to some Better Press cardstock in the color porcelain. Now I went ahead and made two sets of these sentiments. I created one using the rainforest ink and one using the watermelon ink, and I'm going to mix these together on the finished card project. Now once I've inked up these better press plates, I'm going to place the platen on the magnetic feet of the chase of the better press system. And I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine and that's going to press that ink into the cardstock and give me that letter press look. And look how beautifully these turned out. I love this dark rich green, that rainforest colored of Concord and Ninth and it's perfect for the holiday season. So now that I have those pressed, I'm going to go ahead and align the coordinating dies. I'm gonna hold them in place with a little bit of the best ever craft tape from Spellbinders. Keep in mind that this Better Press cardstock is very cottony, it's very fibrous. So tape can rip this paper very easily. So I'm using small bits and I'm being careful not to allow that tape to overlap the portions that I actually wanna use. So I'm kind of allowing the overhang of the tape to be on the part that I'm just gonna toss out anyway. So once I ran that through my die cut machine, I'm gonna pop out all of these sentiment banners and I have 16 different sentiment banners that I can use on holiday card projects and I have them in both watermelon and rainforest. So I actually I created 32 sentiment strips and I did use some of these on a previous card project that I shared last week. I'll be sure to throw a card at the end of this video so you can check out that card if you missed it. Now I have a couple of shapes here that I've die cut from some rainforest cardstock, and I am going to use the 3D embossing folder from Spellbinders. This is new in their Christmas release, and this is called the Argyle Plaid 3D embossing folder. So you can see I'm placing those shapes inside the embossing folder, kind of lining them up, getting them even so that the plaid is straight on these die cuts. And before I run this through my die cut machine, I'm going to actually just use a baby wipe and kind of just get a little bit, just the tiniest bit of moisture onto this cardstock so that there's no cracking and so that I get a nice impression into this cardstock. I actually um, left my fingerprints using that baby wipe, which I thought was super interesting. But once I have that little bit of moisture, you could also mist them with some water. I'm going to place these between the A platform and the D adapter plate and run this through my die cut machine. That is the sandwich that you need for a 3D embossing folder from Spellbinders. And you can see now I have all of this great texture on these die cuts. Now I wasn't sure what shape I wanted to use. I ended up going with the rectangle because I just, I thought it was just, it was just right. I don't know. <laughs> It just felt right. And you can see I have a couple of my sentiment strips here that I am going to adhere together and overlap and kind of create a sentiment focal point 
over the top of these candy canes. So I just used a little bit of tape runner adhesive. I have one of the rainforest colored greetings and one of the watermelon colored greetings. And I also have my holly here that I'm going to attach to these sentiment strips using a bit of foam adhesive. And I go back and readjust this later. And I know many people are thinking, why use the poppy cardstock on the berries when you have so much watermelon? I love a pink Christmas card, but I always like just a tiny bit of red. I just think it just brings it all together. So I felt like the berries were the perfect place to bring in that little splash of red. So you can see here, I am working on my candy canes. I'm adhering them together using a little bit of liquid glue. And once I get them positioned where I want them, kind of crisscrossing each other, I'm going to flip them over and add some more liquid glue on the back and adhere these to that argyle plaid piece that I created. And then I am going to take my sentiment strips and lay these over the top. Now, I did use a double layer of foam adhesive behind these sentiment strips to give them a lot of dimension so that they could come up and over the top of those candy canes. Because keep in mind, those candy canes are four layers thick. So I wanted to make sure there was plenty of clearance. And as I added these, I also kind of shaped them around my fingers to add kind of that waving motion to the banners. Now, once I got that into place, I really felt like this card needed some element of shine. And so I am using some of the DMC Diamant Grande thread in the silver color. I have a double layer here. I'm tying it in a big loopy bow. And I am going to tuck this between those sentiment banners and the candy cane. I really love this messy thread look on this card. You can see I'm just using my tweezers to kind of tuck it in there. I'm going to rearrange it. And when I get it where I want it, I am going to take my liquid glue and just kind of squirt some adhesive behind that to keep all of that thread in place. By having it in that loose bow, I kind of have that knot towards the center. That's a great place to kind of anchor it to my card project. So that's what I'm doing here. And you can see I'm just using my tweezers to get everything in place and adjust everything just where I want it. Now I'm going to finish the card off by adding this layer to a card base created from some blush cardstock. And I am using foam adhesive to adhere this to my card base. And for just a little more shine, I went ahead and grabbed Old Faithful Sparkling Clear Sequins and adhered them onto my card front using my dual ended embellishment tool and some liquid glue. Now I love a little sparkle on a holiday card project and so the sparkling clear sequins, they just feel right to me. Glitter cardstock would also be a great way to add some sparkle to your holiday cards. And you'll notice on this card project, I didn't use the entire color palette that will be my go-to color palette for the 2024 holiday season. But I used several of the colors here and I love the way this card turned out. It is just so much fun. I think candy canes are a perfect little element to add to any card project. And these die cuts really could be used in a variety of ways. I think it would be fun to recreate this card and make the candy canes form a heart instead of that crisscross shape as well. Now, as always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there or you can head on over to my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com. I will have that linked below as well. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information and a complete list of supplies. As always, I want to say thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of my card making and paper crafting video tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.